Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn -turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's servers so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride-sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store or go to getcell411.com. That's getcell411.com. Which is why you I saw, nailed it. Which is, why, uh, I, yeah. which is, I, which is a, why I saw it to work outside the system. <laughs> and that's how I ended up where I am today all these years later. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. And I mean, to, honestly, that's sort of, uh, that, that really resonates with me because now I've gone guerrilla warfare on them. We are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery, statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 137th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. That means you, Estonia. You did them last week. Man, Damn it. Did, didn't I tell you to study? Jesus, Dave. Anyway, we are back. I am, Tasmania. I am Jeremy. That's obviously Dave. Uh, Andre's here too. And uh, what's hey. up, guys? <laughs> and uh, we have returned this week. And we have a guest, uh, another one that Andre has brought us. He's actually doing better than the rest of us at bringing in guests to the I show. I know. Isn't it cool? So, uh, yeah, the, the, young buck sh the young buck show and the uh, veterans off, uh, up, rather. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, but it, so, yeah, so An Andre has brought us a guest this week who has an, an unfortunate story to tell us. But uh, we're hoping to uh, hope spread the message even further and see if we can find some ways to... Uh, uh, maybe, maybe help out, but uh, her name is Rhonda K. But I'm going to pass things over to Andre since uh, he knows her a little better. And why don't you introduce us to what's going on here, Andre? Please, please. All right. Andre. So yeah, thank you, thank you for that, Jeremy. Thank you for that, Dave. Uh, Rhonda K., who is a very, very good friend of mine. She is a server administrator on the Writer's Block, which is a uh, fiction writing and uh, just general writing resource server, uh, which I've spoken about a couple of times on here. Uh, she also runs her own animal rescue, the Tazewell Animal Rescue. And uh, that's, I think, what she came on to talk about tonight. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to her. But uh, she does a lot of charity work through there, and that's what the focus of our conversation is going to be about tonight. So, Rhonda, by all means, introduce yourself. Well, hello. I appreciate you having me on, Andre and everyone else, Jeremy and Dave. Get comfy and uh, tell us what, what, what's up. <laughs> tell us your story. Oh my! Well, um, I do run a 501c3 nonprofit animal rescue in Tazewell, Virginia, which is in the Central Appalachia. You have and my Cent attention. Yeah, <laughs> Central Appalachia is plagued with many problems: social, political, um, cultural. Just it, it, it's it's a very much a problem area in the U.S. and it's not recognized. You don't see a lot of information about it. You don't you don't see you, you just don't see a lot coming out of this area. Diane Sawyer did a very good um, documentary on it several years ago called Children of the Mountains, and um, it really got it right. She did a great job with it. She showed pretty much how horrific it is, and, and I can tell you that it's authentic. You know, what she showed, it's what I see every day. And, you know, the problem there is that the communities here especially the government and the leaders, they don't want that information out there. 
because it makes us look bad. There was a lot of backlash about her, her broadcast. Backlash came from this area. There's been a lot of backlash from my work in rescue. You know, me trying to get the word out in 2012 that Tazewell County Animal Shelter was one of the highest kill shelters in Virginia, that we had a 62% kill rate. And that was just not, um, not something that they wanted published. They couldn't stop it. The, lead, the county board of supervisors and the Commonwealth's attorney and the people in the, in the community could not stop it because that's public information on the VDAC's website, Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. So I put the information out there, but it alienated me with the county and I have suffered years of blowback from that and being unable to speak out about the problems at the local shelters without repercussion that has gotten downright scary at times. And so, yeah, I have a lot to talk about tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, how long have you been running the shelter? And it's, I mean, I know you've been running, I've, we've talked about this forever, but uh, for everybody who's listening to the show, who hasn't listened to any of my podcasts in particular, how long have you been running the shelter? Well, um, I have actually a rescue and in, in Virginia, there is a, a, a rescue. I'm sorry. Yes, I should be more specific. Well, there's a legal distinction in Virginia that I'm not sure it exists in every state. A home-based shelter in Virginia is recognized by VDAX, and I do report, you know, my numbers and, and you know, to them every year. But this is since 2013 when we incorporated and we um, filed and got our 501c3 in 2014. So we've been at it about five years, and it's been a five-year uphill battle and we're not making any progress so now i i know we've spoken about the the general attitude no progress with the state wow no yeah, yeah i know not. right shocking I, shocking i know it's 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 hard to believe it's just oh <laughs> <laughs> so i mean you know clearly the government is going to just stumble all over itself to try and do everything wrong um but you've also mentioned to me that there's just a general like blase sort of attitude about things where you are up there in Appalachia. Do you want to talk about that a little bit before we start getting into like the issues you've had with kind of the local government and state government specifically? Yeah, it's it. Like I said, it's a social and cultural issue and I'm coming at this from way more than an animal rights perspective. Animal rights is very, it's, it's very important to me. But when I look around and I see my community, I see the same atrocities that are happening to the animals happening to the children. And there's a pattern, and it's a pattern that the FBI recognizes and has passed some ordinances and things about it. You know, um, I see it in the elderly, in the nursing homes and um, whatnot. But it's, it's, it's an apathy and a hostility and a resentment of outsiders, total resistance to change. We're at least 20 to 30 years behind the rest of the nation in everything except cell phones. Everybody's got the best cell phones and the best cars. Well, but you know, you got to have, have the essentials, Rhonda. You have to have Yeah, you got to have those. But gosh, we can't bring ourselves to spay and neuter our pets because God made them like that. And if he wanted them to not have been puppies, uh, he'd have made them not have been puppies. Is that really the uh, attitude? Because Yeah, and, and, and it's prevalent. It's everywhere. And, you know... I, it's to the point I, I have been in the feed store and I was filling a propane tank at the feed store and the, talking to the guy who, who worked there. He has sent me several litters that were dumped out on his yard, on his road. Um, it's an area called dry fork and people dump animals like that in dry fork a lot. And he was working and filling propane tank. And this man pulls up behind us. It's an older man, farmer in a big, I know it had to be at least a fifty, sixty thousand dollar dually you know, big fancy farm truck, you know, and when I say fancy farm truck, I mean fancy farm truck with <laughs> chrome on it and stuff. So he's not poor. It's not a matter of poverty. He, he's got money, you know, and he's, he's probably from the old money in the area. He pulls in behind me and he hears us talking and we're talking about the shelter and, you know, the, the, the fact that, you know, every time someone has a litter and dumps them at the shelter, they're killed on taxpayer dime. Taxpayers are spending big money to kill these dogs and cats and you know i mean there's a cost to this and he says the farmer behind me says well wouldn't it be cheaper just to back your truck up there and hook up hook a hose to the exhaust pipe or and you know serious. just spay and neuter he's, them 
Yeah, yeah take exactly. Care of that problem he's, entirely. He's he's serious, and I'm like, well, what? It's just a total disrespect for for life, you know? Yes, it is. It's a total. But see, we also, like I said, and, and what I told him is, I turned around and said, "So let me get this right, sir." I, di I didn't speak quite as properly as I'm speaking here. <laughs> I said, so let me get this right, sir. You, you think that's okay. Well, tell me if you think it's okay when you're about 20 years older and pissing down your own leg, if your grandkids took a hose up to your window and just gas you to death because you've inconvenienced them. I said, because that's the example you're setting. That's what you're showing your kids, and that's what they're going to do. <laughs> I said, not literally, hopefully, but they're going to throw you in a nursing home or throw you away or, or whatever. My area of Appalachia, according to a North Carolina University study a few years back in 2006, has 10% of the nation's nursing home residents right here in central Appalachia. Wow. There's a throwaway mentality. Wow. It's not just the animals. It's the adults. It's the children. Grandparents are raising, you know, kid, the kids, you know, they've raised their own kids. Their kids give their kids to the grandparents to raise. And then it's the a TV whole raises social. the kids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's all. And I don't even know what's sure. raising the kids now. I mean, is it Instagram? Is it's it Facebook? Tide Pods, man? It's it's Tide Pods. Tide Pods, right? Tide right. Pods and YouTube, Uganda what Knuckles. Is it? I don't know, man. We're we're uh, we're in we're in weird times. We are, and I mean, it's it's really in an area like mine that is so cut off from the rest of the world and isolated. We're still getting the influence of that, you know, filtering in, but it's a it's an Im unbalanced influence. So weird times times ten <laughs> here here in here in the hillbilly you know or well hillbilly, hillbilly hell hill. <laughs> hillbilly hell yeah you got it times ten so it's you like know a, that's it's like a hillbilly Eastern with, European country where the you know all the all, all the stuff that we know of Eastern European people that are you know are always like twenty years behind us and like rock, yeah, rock yeah. in the eighties rock on all the eighties music and stuff and back in the in the early two thousands so that's kind of what we're talking about here. And, and yeah, yeah, I, I will yeah. totally vouch for that being the case, ha having been the case in Romania for a very long time. Yeah, exactly. We're finally catching up now. Yeah, no, exactly. Finally. Exactly. There you go. But that's we're, what, we're, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. But but so you're are you actually in North Carolina? To me, I'm in Southwest Virginia. Oh, you, okay. So you're up yeah, further Southwest north, Virginia. but you're in that you're in that area, that whole corridor over there. Yeah, because yes. and you that's where the men are men and the sheep are nervous. Because I know I I, I know I, I know I know North yes. Carolina has a huge issue with the with the kill shelters too. Unfortunately, like yes, Davidson but, County, North Carolina, and my daughter actually lives in Davidson County. Davidson County is the one that made the news not too long ago when a trail of dead cats and puppies was found on one of the main highways and turned to find come to find out the tailgate opened or something in the county animal control truck on its way to the landfill and the animals they'd euthanized that day fell off the back of the truck and I nobody even noticed i they didn't bother to go, pick, go back and pick them up how nice uh, yeah yeah i well i, I only know that because my dog actually came from a rescue in north carolina and it was it's run by two women who actually moved there specifically to open up a no-kill shelter because they yeah. were so upset when they moved down and found out that that's the way they do things down there that everybody's yep. just like oh, i'll just kill them you know it's, it's just that attitude it's and i mean I, i'm all for euthanizing animals and people for that matter if they're in pain or if there's something like if there's something that can't be fixed or if they're dying yeah sure but just doing it because somebody else was irresponsible. Uh, you know, I, I as hate long that. as it's contractual, right? You know. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, of course, <laughs> of course. You have a contract. Well, uh, consensual and contractual. But, but I have, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm a big proponent of obviously the spay and neuter thing. I mean, I, 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 I don't know, I don't know what Andre told you about me, but I actually ran a uh, pet sitting company for a dozen years, and I'm a canine behaviorist. And so I'm kind of, that's why I said originally, as soon as you started talking about it, about a rescue, I'm like, that's why I said you, you have my attention. Um, because I've also worked with a couple of rescues up here. And I, I argue with people in the animal field, you know, because I've worked in animal hospitals and stuff before. And I've argued over the years with many of them who are all about, you know, it's, you, you shouldn't be doing that to the dog because, you know, you're giving them unnecessary surgery. You should just be more careful with your dog. I'm like, okay, they're animals. It's impossible to be more careful with them because just things happen, you know? And it's, yes. it's one thing if, you know, a, a human who has the capacity to understand that if you take this, if you take this action, you're going to be pregnant and then you're going to be saddled with all this, then you got all these responsibilities, yada, 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 uh, uh, you know? But when, a do when it happens with a dog, it's a little different. <laughs> they're just running running on straight up instincts. <laughs>
Yeah, dog, dogs yeah. don't know any better. They, they're, Cats they're too, not capable and, of knowing. And, yeah. and animals are notorious for getting out. Even and again, I've I you know I worked in the animal industry for almost two decades at this point in in different capacities, and I know it like not only good people but extremely good uh, caretakers of their animals who things still happen and especially with cats they have a tendency to sneak out you know <laughs> and Indeed. if you haven't fixed them bad things can happen so that's why you have the explosion at all these shelters i mean every sh- pretty much every shelter or and or rescue across the country is overloaded with animals because there's just so many people who are are neglect or, or ridiculously neglectful unfortunately you know with, yeah, we're like, about to go get my boy kitty yes yeah, well yeah. every there there are many shelters across the nation who've gotten the dogs under control they're spaying and neutering and they're they're got they've gotten i mean we're shipping we we actually ship our dogs to vermont and new hampshire new hampshire doesn't have a single municipal shelter in the entire state it's a no-kill state they don't have They've gotten. They, they've just spayed, and neutered everything, so they're able to take our overflow, and we send them up there at great, great cost and great expense to save their lives. So some of them, but nobody has pit bulls under control, and nobody has cats under control. Now there are some good TNR programs coming up about cats, you know, that are starting to make a difference in some areas. But TNR is trap, neuter, release. It's when you don't exterminate a population of feral cats you sterilize yeah them. we have that and, we have yeah, and, we have a couple of organizations and, up here in new york yeah, and that's, that. that's pretty that's pretty effective but um there there's there are there is a big no kill movement sweeping the nation i don't agree with a lot of the ways they're coming at it and as we talk i'll tell you my i have a big problem with aspca i have a big problem Ooh, with me too we're gonna get along great i have a big 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 problem with 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 them and don't even talk to me about PETA, who runs the highest kill municipal shelter in oh, Virginia. Oh, we we are going to be see, we are going to be best awesome. friends, Rhonda. Isn't Rhonda great? We are going to be I love best Rhonda. friends. <laughs> well, thank you. But it, back to euthanasia. See, I don't even call it euthanasia. I, I mean, and I make a lot of people very angry, and there are people who don't want me to speak publicly. I can't get into the schools here, and I can't get on the yard sale pages and the things like that because I won't use the word euthanasia. Well, the dictionary defines, and I just Google this while we were talking. Just to see what came up with Google, and first the top result was euthanasia is the practice of intentionally ending life to relieve pain and suffering. Nowhere in the definition of euthanasia will you see euthanasia is the practice of putting an animal down because it has become an inconvenience to you. That's killing. There's a difference. And all this euphemism talk and this pretty language that they use, we euthanized. 40% 40% of our intake last year. No, you didn't. You killed them. Okay. Oh, that, un, un, call it what it is. Un, un, See, I don't know why, you know, I, we've, we, we ball game how to make money off of ideas, you know, off of waste streams. And if you look at these, not as like a negative waste stream, but as like an inevitable waste stream, why aren't people selling these things to zoos? Like an alligator doesn't care if it's eating a dog. What? No, uh, no, no, I'm serious. It, it, it's going that what protein. Is wrong with you, Dave? No, that protein and no, that, that energy uh, is no, going Dave. to con- No, Dave. There is some of that going on. And I'm sure there is. I, yeah, don't, I don't know if that's necessarily the answer either, though. <laughs> it's not the answer, but um, and, and it's pretty horrific. And, and yes, I have Dave. a. I think I it's a more been. justified use of the, oh Dave <laughs> than just you know bonk him in the I'm head with, and cook I'm with them. Dave on this one. I'll be honest I, with I, you. That's it's me thoughts. and Dave versus you guys. Well, you're gonna lose. Uh, there are much better ways to do it. Like I said, there are already. Yeah, no, there, there totally are. They're even totally even are. here in New well, York, here, here we we've gone through a whole thing with Russell County, who is next door to us. And right now, okay, I want to be fair about this, and I want to make it clear. Right now, Russell County is virtually a no kill shelter. They've had a group of volunteers move in and clean up what, you know, the shelter. But the two animal control officers who were were responsible for such egregious abuse of animals for so many years are still employed there. And so um, I've been in a battle with alongside Virginians for change to animal legislation for quite a few, for several years now, two or three years now. We just wanted them fired. 
You know, we wanted them to, to suffer some consequence for stealing drugs out of the shelter and for, you know, beating animals to death and putting wildlife in suffocation tubes and suffocating them to death and for telling a man to come pick up the feral cats to use his coon hounds to train his coon hounds with. And, and of course, I'm wondering, is he training his coon hounds to hunt cats or does he want them to hunt coons? You know, I mean, we have a big problem with what they're doing in Russell County. But again, it's central Appalachia. The Commonwealth attorney over there answers to no one. And so when he decided that their votes were too important okay. for him in the election, well, he, yeah. he chose to not do anything and take no action. No action whatsoever was taken against these animal control officers. Nothing. Well, yeah. So, Un- well, I was just going to say, un- unfortunately, every, every one of the problems you listed, which uh, I mean, I, I have a problem with most of what you're saying, too, obviously, uh, uh, what you're explaining. But every one of them, unfortunately, goes back to it's It's all like this is this is what you this is what government brings you. Unfortunately, it brings you in. Ine- yes. It brings you inefficiency, which you're dealing yes. with. It brings it brings with it uh, people getting elected, uh, unelected people almost uh, a lot of times um, or elected. It doesn't matter. But getting stuck, getting put in these positions positions where they are they're they're given uh, immunity um, from a lot of from a lot of things and you know it doesn't matter well, yeah, it doesn't it matter how much you, monopoly yeah it doesn't yeah. matter how much yep. you, it doesn't matter how much you get up and scream and get how many people you get up and, and scream on, uh, to get up and scream uh, in, until enough people not only are, are trying to complain about it through through the legal channels or you know through going through the legislature and trying to like lobby to have these things changed unfortunately usually it takes a an actual shift in in the culture, which is what you really seem to be dealing with down there, is like you know you may you may have support, but you're like you're saying the overall the overarching culture is just is is you know bad, I guess uh, for lack of a better term, uh, and that that's what really needs to change because until the, I mean obviously we here are, are, are all anarchists and we kind of you know think of ways well what what can you do outside of the government uh, to make your to make your situation better and we could probably get to that uh, in a little bit, but. Even if you're gonna, you know, be even if you're gonna try to deal with that, you still have to change the culture. You know, maybe I, I don't know. Uh, well, ma- you're you're nailing it. You're absolutely nailing it because Virginians for Change to Animal Legislation did organize a bit of a rally um, last year, two years ago. I can't. It, I'm losing time. All runs together. But anyway, we all went to one of the county board of supervisors meetings and we had our little signs and there was quite a few people there, standing room only in the in the chamber there. And, you know, we did our little thing. And, of course, you know, the, they were rolling their eyes the whole time we were talking to the Board of Supervisors. And it, it was it was kind of kind of a useless effort. But there was no response from the county. The county never responded. And then later we did a thing where we flooded their county office and their supervisors with phone calls and emails. They just shut off the phone system and quit answering their emails. You know, we yep. shut their system down, but we didn't, they, they don't care. They, well, they're not motivated. There is no motive, no motivation but that's, on the face of this earth to make them change what they're doing. Well, that, yeah. But again, though, that's, that's, that's not even a, I mean, you're, ob- you're obviously uh, dealing with it where you are, but that's not even a, a spe- specific to your area because that's just, you know, the culture in most places exactly. uh, here in the yes. United States. I yes. mean, like I said, I, I live in New York, New York, so I, I deal with a lot of insane regulations on pretty much everything and 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 nobody's responsible for anything. And that's it's actually trying you know, I, I it's thought. actually trying to do the type of stuff that you're trying to do right now, except at the time I was doing it through about uh, schools and stuff like that when Common Core yep. first hit the first hit the thing. Uh, I, I <laughs> yeah, I was a big I was I was a big part of that because at the time I was I was still a Libertarian Party member and I was actually running for local office here in New York. I was running to be the county clerk. But I was I was big in that in the in the push from the parents around here who were actually trying to fight that and, and call and do that stuff. And they did the same exact tactics to us. Eventually they just stopped taking our calls or would just shut, you know, they would they would start shutting down the office earlier and earlier during the day. Lunch breaks were taking longer and longer. You know, you you could literally, if you managed to catch them between like nine and ten and three and four. Like that was the only times you could manage to catch people, and obviously with everybody trying to call at the same time, you never could. So right. they, you know, they they purposely try to uh, ignore you, and because they they know most people, even even the ones who come out in who can be brought out, not uh, I should say, because the ones who start these movements uh, are usually stead can usually be steadfast enough to continue. But the one, a lot of the people who get brought into these movements after they get going. 
don't aren't as aren't as invested and therefore it's so much easier for them to slip back into apathy when they hit those walls and you know it's like oh well we tried and look you know they're not even they're not even responding anymore so i give up and a lot of those people like i said i've seen it happen in so many different movements i've seen it in animal rights type stuff when i was dealing with that up here i saw it in the school type stuff when i was dealing with that up here where people so many people would just end up falling off like shortly thereafter because it's like ah i put in an effort and that's enough and it doesn't change but not not it doesn't change now we have to do something else it's like well it doesn't change so this is the way it is we just have to live with it and like i said for me that actually is what helped me become an anarchist because after dealing with that after after looking on the inside through the political realm of trying to actually get into office and actually dealing with the the politicians close up like trying to call them and talk to them on a regular basis and stuff and seeing how they treat people like that was it for me i really like after years of years of dealing with it i'm like this is just insane. It, it's never going to go anywhere. There's got to be a better way, <laughs> which is why you I saw. Nailed it. Which is I why mean, I. Yeah. Which is I. Which is why I saw it to work outside the system, <laughs> and that's how I ended up where I am today. All these years later. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, and I mean, to, honestly, that's sort of uh, that that really resonates with me because now I've gone guerrilla warfare on them, you know, and I'm using my writing, and I'm I've got a novel that I've written that is going to be out there at some point that has fictionalized this whole thing. And somehow fiction really seems to get to places that truth can't. Yeah. And of course, a lot of it is true, but I mean, it's a fictionalized account, but I'm doing that. I'm, I'm doing, you know, shows like this. I'm talking, talking, talking. They're not going to shut me up. I mean, it, and, oh. and that's what, that's what the whole thing is, is trying to raise awareness and get, they say sunlight is the best disinfectant. Well, we can't go at mm -hmm. this thing directly because they're just going to shut down and shut us out. You know, we're never going to we're never going to get anywhere. You have to go through the steps. You have to try. You have to pick it. You have to do. But you get to a point where you just have to get outside the system and start making a different kind of noise. Well, individual action is the their largest fear, and and they is people who seek to do evil. You know. Because that means that someone's not going according to plan. And if it isn't planned, then they can't plan on the reactions for it. So the best thing you can do is take your, what you believe in, put individual action behind it. And you're doing well, that. Yeah. And what I'm really hoping, what I'm hoping my plan now to do is, and this is a little bit off topic, but not really, because I do want to talk about the- We love off topic just, stuff here. <laughs> Especially Dave. Corrupt. I mean, there's a ton of corruption in the government. I could sit here and just talk about for the rest of the evening that we've, you know, run into trying to get anything done about any of this from the state vet's office to the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. I will not say that the state attorney general's office is corrupt because we've got Michelle Welch in there who's with the she's got she's heads up the first animal law unit anywhere in the US. Yeah, and she's she's pretty good and she's talked to me quite extensively and you know, she's explained why things are like they are and she doesn't like it either. But you know, what is she get she just has to work within the but system that exists. Wow. <laughs> but but the you know, the thing about it is is there's there's just so much corruption to talk about. But what I'm trying to do now is leverage cryptocurrency and trying to get a presence established on steam it and you need to make a shelter coin <laughs> yeah cool. yeah i mean the smt is coming out i mean we're already talking about doing that for the publishing house that we've got you know started up over there but you know the thing about it is is, is we if i can raise enough money Without having, because you're not going to raise money in this community. I'm sorry. It's been tried by some of the best, and you don't raise money here. Um, there's a professional baseball player who came in and tried to raise money for, which he, he had invested all, you know, almost, it was $1.9 million of his own money into a wow. resource learning center for children. And he got run out on a rail when he asked the community to step up and, and start helping support what he had started. So you're not going to raise money here. You wow. get hated. You that's, know, that's, so pre that's I, pretty rough. I, Some guy drops I'm two million to, and they're like, nope, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, it was awful. The public response and commentary. And I have, I, I can, I'm not going to say his name on air, but you know, later privately, I can, I can tell you who it is and you'll know his name if you know anything about sports. But anyway, that all happened. So there's no money, no raising money here, but if I can get enough money raised 
and get enough money going through my Steam account and through cryptocurrency and trading and, and whatever to start my own spay neuter program here because the HSUS wants no part of helping me. The ASPCA, best friends, Maddie's fund, um, the two mods, none of these grant makers who say that they're all about spaying and neutering. They don't want, for some reason, they don't want to put any money into spaying and neutering. They don't want to solve the problem. They just want to keep throwing money at it. And so if I can get my <laughs> that own That sounds like capital, government. It sounds <laughs> like government. Yes, it does. You took the words out of my mouth. It does. And it's gotten completely and utterly ridiculous with, with all of the big box groups. Who, you well, know, I mean, think about it. If they solve the problem, then what, you know, what are they going to do? They're going to be out of a job. Yeah, it's job security. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to try. I'm trying very hard. I don't want to build a shelter. That's not what I want to do. I don't want to take, if I can raise $100,000, I'm not going to build a shelter with it. I'm going to spay and neuter every dang dog and cat I can get my hands on <laughs> and offer a $50 incentive to the people who bring them to me. Wow. So, you know, that's, that's actually, where, that's actually a great, I, I've, that's a great idea. Yeah. That, that breaks the cultural boundaries right there. Everybody. Wait, want a, to, wait, you know, a, wait a minute. You're going to pay me to get my cat fixed. All exactly. right. I'm there, dude. Exactly. exactly. And so that's the plan. And it may be a long goal plan. Of course, you know, we never know what crypto is going to do. Maybe a long goal plan, but that is my long game. And that's what I want to do. Well, no, and that's... I want to put myself out of business with this rescue. You know, <laughs> got better things to do, you know? Yeah. So that's the you, plan. You know, instead of the $50, you could offer like Chrome novelty uh, truck hitches. I think that would probably catch on too. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, if I offered an oxy for everybody, oh, I'm shutting up now. No, that's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you she was know, just kidding not, at NSA, wrong, allegedly, you know? allegedly offering an oxy. Yes, yes. I, I made a joke one time because drug, this is the, this is the prescription drug capital of the world. And I am right next door to McDowell County. And if you, if you, anybody can go and Google McDowell County, West Virginia. And you can see that McDowell County, Mercer County, West Virginia, and some counties in Southwest Virginia are suing the major pharmaceutical companies for the, for the problem. <laughs> I mean, it is so bad here. But I made a joke a couple of years ago, and I mean, I have different neighbors now. So if anyone hears this, they it, don't be offended. The same people are not living. We're not all it's different people. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I said I, I had a dog named Foxy. And I had two dogs named Roxy. So I had three dogs with, you know, that name. I said, you know what? If I went out on my front porch and just yelled, Oxy, I said, I'd have three dogs and six neighbors come running. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, Sad but true. Yeah. Yeah, it is true. <laughs> but that's. But yeah, but yeah, it's it's the material things that, that breaks through culture boundaries when you start waving money around. Oh, yeah. That, oh, that yeah. Will, people that change people there. change their people yeah. change their so-called ideologies and principles pretty darn quick. The whole bunch of them will for you to throw a little cash at them, especially uh, ones that are like like if they're living in such a I guess culturally depressed is, is the best way to put it area um, as compared to the rest of the country the way you're describing it. Then yeah, you know the what do you do? You got to break them out of it. And I, I mean I yep. I love the idea because I, I was thinking as you were talking about it. One of my first thoughts went to, you know, somebody just recently, well, it wasn't recently, I think it was a couple of months back now, though, uh, released, a, is re released an app that uh, is, to, is to help bail people out of jail who can't afford it uh, by people just donating cryptocurrencies. And like, I, I was thinking something along the lines of that. Uh, t for 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 you too to you know yeah, that'd be awesome. to, to have people just like just donate a, like a little it's one of those things you donate a little bit but it adds up after a while to help help fund the cost and then on oh, the on man. the on the flip side you know you're just you're whatever the money you're taking shelter is a great idea too man just think about yeah, well yeah but but, but I, I understand i understand what ron is saying like yeah it's great i mean if you want to open up a shelter or if you want to open up a rescue yourself like yeah sure that's great and that's what the people that i got the my uh, my do i got murder dog from you know they used to live up here by me and they went to visit friends and they found out that in north carolina it's like pretty much all kill shelters and like this is horrible we're moving down here and opening a shelter that's a no kill shelter it's like yeah that's great but what ron is talking about is taking it a step further and actually you know which is what something we talk about all the time striking the root actually going after the problem and going after the spay and neuter thing 
you know, because like I said, we have them up here. We have some volunteer, you know, some uh, either nonprofit organizations or whatever. They're not government related uh, that or private, just private companies that, or, pri- you know, vets that just choose to do this on their own and offer these services, you know, the trap, and, uh, the trap, neuter and release things. Uh, so it's, I mean, I love it, obviously. It's, uh, you know, the free market at work. It's not government solving the problem. It's people solving the problem, working outside of the government and, and, and fixing the problem and, and actually going after the root of the problem. So I think this is a great idea, you know, and especially since I, I as we've recently met, as we've re- mentioned recently, we're all back on, well, Andre's been there, but we're, Se- Seize of Liberty and myself are back on Steam it after, you know, I poo-pooed it for a year and a half and I finally admitted I was wrong. And it seems like the platform <laughs> has uh, really going to be taking off soon, especially with the addition of all these new side chains. So it's the perfect, I, I think it's a you know, great opportunity for you to get in there and try to promote this, you know, all the stuff that you're doing, because, you know, you could do videos about it, you could do audio stuff, and you could just do written stuff and all this stuff, especially the fiction Man, stuff. Man, I'm glad I made that account. <laughs> Yes, so am I, Dave. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I, I think it's great. And I, I think maybe, you know, trying to, trying to get some donations on, on your end, too, uh, would, would definitely help you go a long way. So I love this idea. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's already. I mean, Steemit has being on Steemit, and it, it, it's a totally. I'm stacked, stabs, little, 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 I can't talk. I I've just completely lost my words. It's Anything, that good, huh? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. I mean, it has. Let's just say this: Steemit and Steemians and crypto um, back, you know, people have supported my rescue since about July, and supported oh, it better than anything i mean i have never ever gone into a winter with heat that works thank you andre i have never gone into a winter with enough dog food with enough money to pay vet bills this is the first time that we've ever had what we needed just to survive and it's a small amount i mean it really it's less than a thousand dollars a month you know just to keep my doors open and you know pay the overhead the electric because i have a a property dedicated to this so you know it's very small amount but that's the we were in such dire straits a year ago and and even you know seven eight months ago in such dire straits that i could not i mean i was looking at just i didn't i was didn't know what i was going to do with the dogs who were here in sanctuary dogs that cannot be adopted. I'm like, I can't afford to do this anymore. I don't know what, what's going to happen to these dogs. So it's gone from that to now we're looking at being able to actually renovate this house a little bit. It won't, it won't take that much, but just to renovate the house a little bit and then do that spay neuter program, you know, um, like and, I yeah, was talking about. And, and give house, back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, exactly. and give back, which is awesome. Well, uh, exactly. well, we uh, it's, what's uh, who? What's what's her name? Who uh, who works with you guys? Who you hired? Sherry. Um, yeah. Yeah. She gets she gets paid via Steemit, right? I mean, yes. she's still what, you, I, you're still doing that, right? Yes. I mean, and you know, she really made a bundle when SBD spiked. She was able to do Christmas. She's a single mother, and she was able to do Christmas for her son. And we reworked it a little bit because, I mean, it was when they spiked up to, you know, twelve, fourteen dollars for S B D, I mean, really, even she was like three hundred dollars to come clean your house. I mean, you know. So and when I say house, we have property, we have seven acres and a house that we bought specifically for the rescue. And when I say renovate, I don't mean make a pretty house. I mean make kennels. Make it functional. And fix the plumbing. Yeah, make a functional workflow for animals here and something that that we can actually pass state inspection to maybe become a shelter you know um we pass as a home-based rescue we would not pass as a shelter um and that's why virginia has the two distinctions they do want people in homes to be able to rescue uh... dogs so you know that's that's one thing we're looking at but that's not a whole lot of money i mean that's very within reach what's the uh do you uh-huh. know what the number one most demand in demand uh, dog uh, breed is in in your area? Coonhounds. Coonhounds. What well, my thoughts are just you know here's where my brain goes. Why not since you have all the infrastructure, s- invest a little money into a purebred male and female of that. Use <laughs> that straight line on the side to oh, fund the no, shelter. No, 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 no. Reading you don't, is for, for reading. one thing. It's against the law. 
Uh -huh. Wow. A, five, a, a, a rescue in Virginia cannot operate as a breeder. But why in the world, if you have such an imbalance of supply and demand, why would you keep adding more supply? Well, I you mean, have a high demand question. for a certain but it for a certain breed, though. But it's the not supply, just dogs. But the it's, supply you know. is still about twenty six times the demand. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, then um, dogs are just really just out of control in your city or your state. Huh? It's not. It's not just yeah. her area, though, Dave. Like I said, this is actually a problem in in a lot of areas around the country. I mean, almost all the shelters up here, the shelters and rescues are packed. Even the even the smaller, like the you know, like the the the, the nonprofit ones and the private ones, you know, they're, they're all usually packed to the gills. I used to have a bunch of clients that either got their animals there and stayed in contact with the people there or knew people that worked there or people that actually worked there that ended up being clients of mine. And uh, they were always trying to like, if I knew anybody, if I knew anybody, if I knew anybody who could take a dog, if I knew anybody, if I could just take a dog, maybe could I just foster a dog for a little while? Well, you don't, I mean, you have seven acres, so you could easily, you know, but again, they've slowly like, set up but again, one they, acre. You, you, but you know, she said there's the supply is way over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, yeah, that's a tough spot. Well, no, I, I, I think it's. I mean, she has the space to do a lot of things, but I think this is great that you know. I, I think the idea she has already are pretty solid. I don't know. I'm a big fan of them. I think uh, you could probably get every nursery in your state to donate fruit trees to you, and you could plant them all over your property and just pick the fruit and sell it and fund that whole operation. Now that I like. <laughs> But I was thinking not fruit trees. I was thinking let them legalize marijuana, and then you know, we'd have a cash crop. Well, yeah, <laughs> but that's in, in Virginia. That's a goal. It, it's a goal. It's a goal. We're we're not there yet. But again, no, we're not. <laughs> Virginia is probably one of the furthest off states from that happening. Uh, no West Virginia, kidding. like they probably no like they, they 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 love because I I mean there's a huge there's a huge I mean isn't there a huge uh, heroin problem in West Virginia? Uh, and and uh, 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 what's well just the opioid problem. Isn't that one of the uh, big prescription things? drugs? Oxy yeah, op yeah, opi yeah, opioids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's there's that, there's that and, and they make it, they make a lot of money on all ends of that. You know, they make <laughs> uh, the pharmaceutical companies end up making money somehow off of it with all that stuff getting out of the streets, and then and then the government can make money. You know, even the local ones just by constantly locking people up over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> Yeah, confiscating cash. And right, yeah, confiscating cash, getting bail, getting all this other stuff, you know, getting fines and just constantly, constantly, constantly revenue generating off of it. So, yeah, that's going to be that's going to be a tough sell. And of, and and of course, the which the I mean, although the funny thing is they they legalized it in, in DC, but anywhere surrounding DC, like it gets harder and harder to do it. Like the further out you get from it, it's, it's, it gets a little easier unless you're in the Bible Belt. Then it's going to be tough there too. You guys are screwed. Alabama's probably going to be one you guys of the are last, fucked. if not the you last. You guys are fucked. <laughs> you well, I, I, if Atlanta does it, then the politicians over here will do it. They, they basically just follow suit. Yeah, Georgia overall doesn't seem like a big weed state to me, so. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, okay, because I'll go, I'll you're not going to be able to stop people going down I-20 and getting in, driving it right back across the city or uh, the this, state Yeah, line. this is true. This is true. Well, no, well, so, they'll, they'll try, isn't it? That's what happened when when Colorado. I remember when Colorado first went legal. They all like the surrounding states, especially like the all. I mean, there was a bunch of them that sued for uh, <laughs> that sued this, this bunch of states that sued the state of Colorado for making people flood you know you know come come over the you know all this stuff and causing all these people to cross over state lines to buy stuff from them and bringing it back to their neighborhoods and uh you know and I know they were setting up checkpoints and there was a lot of people who got busted so you know I'm sure they they say they don't want it but they end up they end up making out I don't know <laughs> feel free to delete the photo that I just put in chat, um, and I know that listeners can't see it, and that's probably a good thing, but um, you can delete that, but you want to talk about an unbalanced supply and demand, guess what's up to the bed rails in that truck? I, I can't really see it at the moment. Coon hounds? Too far away. <laughs> just dead ones. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it is unfortunate that there's not, you know, there's nothing, there's not much that can be done with when there is this overpopulation now, except do what you're trying to do. But I mean, I, I hate that. I, I hate seeing this stuff. 
I don't care how, uh, you know, feelsy that makes me in the situation. <laughs> like everybody has their soft spots. For me, it's animals. That's been well known for a long yeah, time. See, oh my God, emotions aren't do, an argument, Jeremy. All you needed to do. Well, hey, there's plenty of people Rhonda, who would say that to me right off the bat. I'm like, Rhonda, whatever. you missed your golden opportunity. You should have live stream on Facebook or whatever, walked over to the back of that car and been like, I need money for my shelter to stop this. Boom! Oh, speaking of live viral. streaming, I do apologize. We are we are, we are we are we are live streaming somewhere. And for anybody who wasn't prepared, yeah, we are, we do have kind of potty mouths on the show. I hope everybody was ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody that I gave the link to is not going to be bothered by potty mouth. Oh, okay, that's they that's they um they see stuff that makes them you know when you deal with animal abuse and you deal with cruelty and you deal with the injustices and stuff. You, if you didn't have potty mouth going in, you will coming out. Oh yeah, I can understand that. I mean, I had it going in, but I, I was I was in the, <laughs> I was in that world for a long time because, like I said, I've been I've been working with animals for like you know off and off and on for a good portion of my life. But you know, I ran my own business for twelve years. For that before that, I spent like five years or so between animal shelters, which we call veterinary offices, uh, and also and also or animal hospitals rather, and also were and also running a being the assistant manager at a Petco, where I got to t- learn to take all you know all these all the other smaller animals on top of everything else. So now I have. <laughs> A wide variety of expertise on a whole bunch of animals, and I'm a little touchy about them. But I'm but I'm used to dealing with it because I was involved in all that. Like I I ended up when I first started. I, I I don't know if I've ever told this story on the on the show before, but when I first started my company, a lot of people mistakenly got the idea that I wasn't running a pet sitting business; that I was actually running a rescue. And my numbers started getting handed out all over the place. And I was getting calls at like random hours of the day, all, all hours of the night and day with people asking me to take their animals, not for me to pet sit them like I was trying to get them to do because I, you know, my company was like, I maybe a year old at that point, maybe a little less. They, yeah, I, I kept getting all these calls for that. And I ended up doing it uh, specific. Well, actually, I was going to say specifically with one, one animal, but no, because I, that's how I ended up with all my ferrets. And, and, you know, I ended up taking in like birds, guinea pigs. I learned what a daegu was. I had no idea what that creature was until I brought it to my house because somebody called me and said they had it and they had to get rid of it because their mom was going to... What's gonna... a daegu? <laughs> it's a furry little th- desert c- creature that looks kind of like a gerbil. Uh, no, it doesn't actually... It looks more It looks more like a miniaturized chinchilla, actually, kind of, but without the crazy ears, um, but with like a more like a gerbil tail. Weird. Yeah. They're anyway, actually, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. It's fine. They're actually very cute. And I just, I had no idea it was an animal I had never heard of before, but I got a call that somebody's mom, like some, you know, somebody who lived in an apartment with their mom had snuck it in their room and had it there for like a week. The mom found out was going to freak out. We're just going to let it loose in the streets of New York City. And I was just like, oh, fine. I'll take the goddamn thing. I don't even know what it is. I had to go look. I had, I'm like, actually, I'll call you back. I had to go Google it really quick. And I'm like, all right, it's a small animal. I think I can handle this. I've done this before. But yeah, so anyway, <laughs> I digress. I don't, I don't know where I don't remember where I digress from, but I I, I just I'm going to post another picture, Jeremy. You may not want to look at it, and I am going to delete this one. This is where you get when you deal with this day in and day out. You get to this point when you want to say these things to people, and you get to the point where you will post this on Facebook because if one more person advertises for stud service for their dog or has a litter of puppies and they're going to have another litter of puppies in two but you get to i the hate point. backyard breeders with a, with a I blinding passion i want lot, i yeah. really want to hurt most of them some i've met some that are actually really great and you know i actually got a dog for somebody through one that was an amazing part you know they did amazing things with the dogs but other than on the whole i, I hate these people i hate them <laughs> anyway sorry continue you know, I've, I've posted things. I try not to post on Facebook or social media anywhere. I try not to post the worst of the stuff there because, I mean, that will drive people away. It will, you know, it even me, I can't look at some of the most horrible things that, that come across my feed. I, I can't. So you have to be aware that you cannot. We deal with these things on a nearly daily basis, those of us in the industry, because this is what we chose to do. And I have devised my own method of dealing with the horror of it and the frozen dogs that you that you find and the, the horrible situations that you find. I've devised my own method of dealing with it, but the public didn't ask. Did, you know, they didn't ask to see these things. Every now and then, though, I get really upset. And this is what I posted on my Facebook feed a while back and lost some major supporters They from my area. They just didn't think I had any business saying anything like this to people in our area. 
yet this is exactly the way the dogs at our shelter are disposed of. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah, and, you're right. Though, sorry. Yeah, it's it's always it's always bothered me when somebody says, "Oh, well, you don't you don't have any business presenting this." Like they, they, nobody asked to see this. Like, well, yeah, nobody asked to see the horrible things that happen on behalf of the state, but they still happen. So, yeah. you know, ignoring it and kind of turning your head the other way and pretending it's not there doesn't change anything. Like all these horrible things are still happening. So there's this that that whole line of reasoning, like, oh, well, you shouldn't show people this. It's it's very disturbing. Like, yeah, it is very disturbing. People should know what the hell's going on. They should be disturbed. I agree. I, you are right. They should be disturbed. I mean, because somebody has to haul those plastic bags full of dead animals out of the shelters. And I'm not talking one or two. I'm talking about like that photo that fills up to the bed rails of a truck. You know, somebody has to do that. You know, and maybe somebody gets paid for it. Maybe it's a volunteer. But I'm sure they didn't ask to do that either. That's well, not what they grew up aspiring to do. Well, you know? if, they, if they agree, if they if they agree to do it, it's one thing. I don't know. In most of those situations, it usually is somebody who's there from the state, and they are getting paid. With, yeah, with taxpayer I just, dollars. I just hate that it's it's just going to waste. That's one of my biggest things <laughs> that I hate. Yes, well, I know, Dave, but we're trying. We're beyond. We're beyond. We're beyond. We're beyond the result, Dave. We're trying. To, we're trying. We're trying to problem solve here. So like, you just keep getting stuck. You're, yeah, you're, you're trying mean, to you're trying to fix you're trying to just leave like, let the existing problem continue and just yeah. deal with the results of that. I, I, Rhonda's moved past that, and I'm with her uh, to try to actually you know be proactive and actually just actually solve the problem. Mm. And uh, I think she's got a great model for it too. So. Well, here's the other aspect of that too. Recently, there were some pet food products recalled from I think it was China because they had it usually is. Well, yeah, there, there were there were high quantities of the euthanasia drug in there that's in Fatal Plus, and so when they went back and looked, that's what China was doing was recycling the bodies of the euthanized animals. They were feeding them to other animals, and it was causing problems. I mean, animals wait, wait, dying. okay, so so wow. wait, wait, just so I have this clear. So Chinese dog food is made from dogs. Uh, the products. Some some um, dog foods are treat. I think it's it's usually treats. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, I, yeah uh, it was. I, it was. Let it never be said that Chinese people do not cook dog in some form or fashion. <laughs> well, I mean, it is a thing, may, and you heard it here first. They, I, it may have been horse or cow too. It may not have been dog. I mean, it was hard to it, indeterminate. These were byproducts that this. Give, this leave this me my dream, founded. Rhonda. Stop trying uh, to destroy <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. Soil and green as people. The the point it's is people is that you can't recycle these for food purposes because they contain lethal amounts of drugs, and you can't feed them to anything. Yeah, that's pretty. That's like there was uh, well, uh, there was something else I was reading recently about uh, uh, things being uh, certain food having uh you know just cancer uh, you know getting ca cancer cells ground up in it too you know the same type of thing. It's just like yeah, give people poison. It's fine. No worry. It's uh, it's it's within the laws of the. Yeah, they'll, they'll bounce right back. They'll it, bounce right it back. It manages to be within the laws of the state, so they're allowed to get away with it, and and not and not enough is done to try to drive them out of the market because usually companies that get away with stuff like that are the bigger ones that are usually in that position because they already have the regulations in place that help them. That's how they got there. <laughs> but I digress again. But yeah, that's, well, that's that's horrible. That's the other thing is like if you give if you give uh, if you create legal limits for these sorts of things. That gives everybody who engages in that sort of practice an automatic fallback position, which dissuades, in my opinion, quite a bit of like what would otherwise be vicious backlash against those sorts of business practices. So they can just turn around and say, oh, well, you know, we're following the law. You know, if you got a problem with it, change the law. We're just following the law. And I think that discourages a, a great number of people uh, right. with regards to pushing mark to pushing actors out of the market. That okay. are doing things yes. that like people don't agree with and think is just absolutely terrible. Well, that is sort of when the whole situation with Russell County was at its most feverish. A news crew from uh, Richmond traveled here. It was like eleven hours round trip and filmed one of the the animal control officers there who. Um, had witnessed some of the things they talked to her the county didn't really want to talk to him of course and they went back to richmond and the next segment the follow-up segment the the next night was 
they talked to the state veterinarian and I have this clip. It was WRIC that did it. It was Kristen Smith was the reporter. And I have these clips where she interviewed the state veterinarian. And the whole point was, is that it is against the law for employees, even state employees or county employees or government employees to behave in certain ways toward the animals. It's a crime. It's a crime, 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 crime. Specific, it cannot be spelled out any more clearly specific, in the Virginia code. Specifically to them being government employees is what you're saying, as opposed to just in general? As opposed to in general. Okay. It's a crime. I want to clarify. Go ahead. Yes. It's a, it's, it, it's a, I mean, a, a cruelty to animals is cruelty to animals. And there has been some relief on that in the last year or so. But at the time, instead of pursuing a criminal complaint, which was within the state veterinarian's office to do, it was within their purview to pursue a criminal complaint, they levied a fine against the jurisdiction. <laughs> so that the perpetrators, the criminals, never they, – they didn't pay the fine. It didn't come out of their salary. Wow. It came out of the taxpayers. Well, again, that's you a know, duh. contribution. Oh so Socialize the county the paid the fines for crimes. Well, for yeah, crimes but... committed against these animals. This is documented. You know, this is well documented. Um, one of the advocates from Eastern Virginia is Eileen McAfee. Or McAfee. I'm probably pronouncing her name wrong. Um, but she is on record and on, she goes, she's also interviewed by this reporter and she makes the point very clearly. These are fines for crimes mm -hmm. and they're not even paid by the perpetrators. They come out of taxpayer money, yeah. you know? So it's, it's, it's outrageous. And when, the, when Kristen Smith interviewed the state veterinarian, he dodged that ball quite effectively by saying that, you know, he sort of felt like that was the responsibility of the communities. To, to, to speak up and say that they didn't want their animals disposed of and treated in that manner. You know, complete shirking of his responsibility as the state veterinarian and the state veterinarian's office. Uh, we're not going to bother with that because we think the communities needed. Well, that's not what the law says, but who <laughs> well, cares? Well, you know? again, that's government, though, in, in, on every level. Exactly. You know, they, exactly. They, they're not responsible. The same thing happens. That's why I go. I, I mean, I, I mean, I used to cheer it, but now, after, now that I understand, I actually get mad whenever I see somebody suing, like the police, for instance, for something. You know, you know, even if, even if something horrible did happen to them, I hate when I see people suing them because it's like, well, no, because they're not going to pay it. Some of the times they don't even lose their jobs, and even if they do, they, right. they still That's end up right. keeping their pensions. And it's no different. It's actually even worse in the bureaucratic realm. So many people on so many different levels of government in so many different areas of the country get away with so much because, you know, they have the, the certain levels of, you know, once you're there, you have certain levels of, of immunity. And even if you do get, quote unquote, punished, you, you know, most of the time they don't pay anything. Some of them end up going to jail, but any fines they pay almost always come out of, you know, the taxpayer. Oh, fund. yeah. State coffers every time, you know, every time. And it's, it's just so really in the end it's just counterproductive to what the people are trying to accomplish and they just most people just don't realize it and again like i said you know for me that's it's this type of thing that led me away from even trying with the you know government anymore and most times not even caring about the, their laws in general as long as i wasn't you know harming anybody else or you know causing any harm to anybody or the, or their property uh, i was pretty much just like yeah whatever i'm just going to do what i'm going to do <laughs> just leave me alone <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, and that's true. And, you know, to me, this whole thing, you know, we can talk about animal rights and people may have differing views about animal rights and what they should have. And that's, that's perfectly fine. That's not where I'm going. I think Dave this. would definitely present the, a different opinion from what yeah, we might and, hear from and that's, you. That, that's know. fine. That's what I'm saying. That's, that. that's not, um, that's not even where I'm, where I'm going with it. The, the, the point is that you can look at the whole movement, the whole problem, the whole thing with animal rights and see a microcosm of what's broken in government right here. You want to, you want a full picture yeah. on a small scale, look at it right here and there you have it. It's there broken. ought to be a law. Let's sleep this problem under the rug and let the state fix it instead of actually fixing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's basically what's wrong with society right now is, is when we throw these things to the commons we get things like everything has to be fixed by the state. It just it's just bad, bad precedent, you know.
people think and, they can do and everything and they can't the, even do one thing, you know? And, yeah. And then there's the intimidation factor. Like when you have in a small region, like I live in, when you do try to do something and you do try to step up, you get so there's the mountain mafia here in <laughs> Southwest mountain Virginia. Mafia, that's great. Oh yeah. It, it's, it's, it's disorganized crime. I say disorganized because there's no central. Yeah, that's what we call government. Yeah. It, well, yeah. And I mean, these people, they are thugs. I mean, I've seen some of the nastiest stuff happen by county leaders on Facebook, you know, telling everybody to boycott a business because they let a politician put a sign in his yard. They have no fear of putting that on Facebook. They have no fear of people losing their jobs because they support this one or support that one. People in my area are, you know, they're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to, to say who they're going to vote for. They're afraid to... Um, take any kind of stand or action because the repercussions are very real and they can be all the way from holes in tires like I had. I'll never prove that somebody slashed my tires, but I, I didn't have a hole in that tire when I went to bed that night. But when I woke up the next morning, there was in the sidewall of a hole in my tire. <laughs> yeah, so, that, that, that would have been know, difficult to pull off without you noticing. So. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it, it, but anywhere from that to people losing their jobs to reputations being smeared. Um, that happened to me. Uh, an employee with the county attorney's office, when I first started my rescue and started making noise they didn't like, made sure to tell everybody at the local beauty salon that, that we were fraudulent and they were in the process of investing, investigating us for fraud. That was nice. more they never, they never did. Never, ever. There's never been, to my knowledge, even a complaint. I mean, you can go to VDAX, you can go to look at GuideStar and all. There's never been a complaint about us. What were they ta even? What was she even talking about? But she did, you know, she went and she said that. And there was nothing I could do but just say, huh, okay, whatever. You know, we'll, we'll see, you know. And then having, um, I had a contracts attorney at one point when I was making a lot of noise about a dog who was injured at the shelter and I was making a bunch of noise about that. I got that onto the news because the news stations are pretty much scared to, you know, they want to stay beholden to the local government here. So they get the scoop. And so they're pretty much scared to challenge anything. It's not, people think that news hounds are always looking to rock the boat. Not here. No, they're looking to make nice with everybody. So they keep getting the stories that, that, that's that, that get the, get the ads, you know, so, but anyway, I was making a lot of noise they didn't like about a dog. So my contract's attorney, who is no longer my contract's attorney, made sure to call and tell me that his buddy, the Commonwealth attorney, you know, because they work out of the same office before the guy got elected, um, had said that there were felony charges pending against me and that I needed representation. And then proceeded to quote me like five or six thousand dollars of his retainer if he was going to represent me. There were no felony charges against me. What had did they pull that out of? <laughs> You nice. know, and the, the sheriff's office telling me I had to take a polygraph test because I reported abuse of a dog in a shelter to the animal control officers, which is what I was supposed to do because I didn't take that dog to the county vet who is has no contract, legal contract with the county. Um, Virginians for Change to Animal Legislation FOIA'd the, the information about that veterinarian from the county, and there's no, there's nothing is, is legit you know, between the county and them, no RFP or anything, but they're doing it, yeah, sending like, all business to her. But yeah, it's like the anyway. federal, federal reserve. That's not really federal. Yeah. So, you know, and government got to love it. Yeah. And so I'm told that I, I am asked to take a polygraph test about the dog that I report. And if that's not bullying and intimidation, I don't know what is. That's, that's pretty outrageous right there. That and is it, outrageous. It is. That is and it, that's fucking ridiculous. It is, and they get away with that here. Um, there's, and it's not just me. I'm not the red pig here. I mean, this happens to anybody who speaks up, who you know, who tries to rock this boat, who tries to change the status quo, or who says anything that's perceived as negative in some way about their little regime that they have going. You are at very real risk of, you know, bad stuff happening to you. So. I you wish know, I was unattached and didn't have a kid so I could go up there and like really ruffle some feathers. <laughs> I do. I do. Cause it's yeah. one thing. That's one thing I never got around to doing when I was younger and I didn't have, you know, a, a wonderful daughter to, to take care of. Um, I never got a chance to like really ruffle, ruffle some feathers and, uh, 
wrestle some jimmies because at the time it was I wasn't in the same mindset as I am now. Of course, that that uh, that came with time and experience, but I would have loved to have the opportunity to go yeah. up there and uh, make life difficult for him. Yeah, well, I would love to see it, you know, but you just make you have to make sure you have nothing to lose because you know they'll they'll come at you. There one there was an attorney a few years ago who decided to run against the regime Commonwealth attorney, and now I don't in hindsight I'm I I can't say that he 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 may or may not have been a good candidate. I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not going down that road. But the point is is that when he began to point out some improprieties that were being perpetrated on people, the bullying, there was an all-out smear campaign against him. The local newspaper, this is no shit, guys. The local newspaper on the front page above the fold, if I'm not mistaken, I can't really remember. It's been a couple of years ago. Posted a mugshot of him when he was like 20, 21 years old before he even went to law school. A picture of him he had gotten he had gotten DUI or something like that. And just absolutely vilifying this this guy. He'd had a name change. He changed his name to a certain name because he was a DJ in his college days. He changed his name. It's this real cool name. Oh, they had this whole conspiracy theory about why this why this foreign boy, it's foreigner. He was a Kenyan, he was wasn't Mexican he? Mexican or something. You know, <laughs> why this foreigner, you know, would change his name. And I mean, they trashed that man, trashed him publicly. The newspaper, the reporters who are supposed to be impartial, wow. just absolutely ran him. And there's no shame. There's absolutely no repercussion for him. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't know that he would have been the best Commonwealth attorney. I don't know. But my God, what I saw happen in that election was as thuggish as, as it gets. Oh, and it's, I knew, it's insane yeah. the higher you go, you know. Well, no, it's no, it's no, it's it not. Is. It's it's actually worse on the more local level. That's the kind of thing. Yeah. Like again, that's what I was mentioning earlier. That's that's what eventually <clears throat> pushed me over the edge was yeah. dealing with the was because I, I you know I kind of realized at some point that the you know the presidential debates and everything were more or less a puppet show because it didn't really didn't really matter. It never seemed to change. It didn't matter who was in. So, you know, they, they talked a lot of stuff. Uh, they talked differently, but they, you know, everything kind of stayed the same for years and years and years. Uh, and then, I, but then I realized that, you know, okay, you got to make a change on the local level. And when I tried to get into the libertarian party around here, that's what I found out because not only did I have issues with, you know, because I mean, libertarians have to go jump through a whole bunch of hoops just to get on the ballot here, <laughs> uh, just to be, you know, you have to get all these signatures and stuff, but just seeing how corrupt it was on the local level it was even it was in some ways it seemed even worse because people were able to get away with being in power you know because on the on the federal level for the most part it's only like certain senators and stuff get to get away with being there and a couple of house members get to get away with being there for like you know decades but on the whole there is changeover but on the local level it's like there's so many people who get it's stuck in these positions for as long as they possibly can because as once they get in as long as they're willing to play ball with everybody else that's already there to a certain extent you know they'll stay there forever and it's hard you know it's horrible with that here and they chase the 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 one the only guy on the libertarian ticket that year who actually gave a crap about get getting elected like me my friend nolan and the other one of the other a couple of other guys that were on the ballot didn't really care. We were just placeholders. But this one guy really, really wanted to get elected because he really, really wanted to change things in his area. And we were like, all right, we'll try to help you out. But they, the Democrats and the Republicans colluded like almost openly, literally to the point that it wouldn't be that it would, it would be really not that hard to prove, but they'd still probably be able to slip out of it on some technicality or whatever. But it was pretty blatant that they were just openly colluding about making sure this poor guy didn't even get on the ballot. I mean, this was just some nobody guy who wanted some like, you know, crap position on a local politics thing. And they just made sure that there was absolutely no way he could get in because he wanted to do exactly what you were talking about, change the status quo. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And, and, you know, I think what makes it worse on a local level is that it's a fishbowl and it's it, it, there's 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 less accountability because there's not as much visibility and i think that's probably why it 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 can be a little nastier even at the local level even though the stakes might not be quite as high it's it does seem to be be they get away with more seems like 
Well, I mean, in some cases, the stakes could be high, could be just could just as high as higher because a lot of these positions end up turning into li- lifelong things. <laughs> true, it's, it's true, a, very it's a, true. It's a, you know, it's a sweet gig for like you know twenty, thirty years that they get to be in this cushy government job and get that get the pension on top of it. Oh, so, and the nepotism is insane too. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, in the, in the local, like I said, I I realized that's that's what pushed me over the edge was realizing that the local politics was even worse. Uh, in in certain ways than than what goes on. I the still think level. winning mayor is a good idea. No, I we we've, we've talked people. about that, but we're not we're not going to go down that road tonight. We already are com- coming close to an hour if we're not already there yet. Um, so <laughs> I don't want to divert oh, Dave. <laughs> I'm not going to let you yeah. do it, man. Not going to let you do it. <laughs> Diversion Smart. Dave. Um, so Diversion pro- Dave. That's prob- a great nickname. We, yeah, exactly. We should we should we should probably start getting wrapping up sometime soon. So I want to make sure though, uh, Rhonda, is there anything else you, you want to get out there first before we start uh, closing out for for the night? Actually, you guys gave the perfect platform to pretty much air this whole thing. I do have a lot of this documented, or really pretty much, if I said it on. Um, this show tonight, it is documented because I, I don't care too much about getting accused of uh, libel, slander, anything. So if I said it, it's documented. I have a Steam shelf, which is on a web. It's it's a website that we have, and I, it's s t e e m shelves dot com. And you go to the nonfiction section, and I'm right on the front there. You can find Rhonda K. But anyway, I have about Russell County. I have a post about Russell County with links to those news shows and links to the uh, McAfee document that details the abuse that went on in that shelter in Russell County for all those years. Very tough to read. Very, very hard reading. I have uh, other, you know, things detailed in there about some of the stuff I talked about. If anybody wants any more reading, they're collected there on that website. It's S T E E M shelves.com in the nonfiction. Okay, well, I'll make sure to put that and uh, any other any other links you want me to, I'll, I'll throw in the show notes too, so they'll definitely be awesome. there. Okay, good deal. I'll get you that link. I'll DM it to you or something yeah, so perfect. you have it. Perfect. Well, thanks for coming on, Rhonda. Thank you for having me. You guys are awesome. You are a lot of fun. And, are they? Uh, They're yeah, great. They are. This is great. I wish I had more interesting stuff to talk about. I'd love to come back, but my gosh, it seems like I'm a one one trick pony here. So. <laughs> Well, 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 I'm sure I'm sure more stuff is going to come up as time goes on because I mean we've got how many different irons in the fire? I we we have plenty of stuff to talk about for many shows to come. True. So I true. think I think we'll be all right on that well, one. E- even <laughs> I, I was going to say even with uh, you know I mean obviously dealing with the uh, de- dealing with what you're dealing with now is is uh, you know one thing, but you know the project you're talking about and the whole the whole the, the ideas where you know you were talking about earlier. Uh, I think that's really, I, I'm really, like I said, I'm really excited about that. So I think that we could be able to follow up on that at some point at the very least, you know, well, see, that, how, see that how would, you're going. And uh, we're that definitely, would be awesome. definitely put links for everything for that and make sure uh, people want to look into that. Cause I, I think it's a great idea. I, like I said, I, I think the idea of also doing, um, you know, don- donations coming into you, not just being able to give something back to the community to hopefully kind of jar them into being willing to do, you know, get off their butts and do so. Uh, to kinda, exactly. S- again, so- solving problems instead of uh, just putting band aids on problems and doing it outside of the government. That's what we're all about here. So I'm a big fan. Yep. I, uh, I definitely want to make sure I-, I follow up with you later on, see how things are going. No monopoly needed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that would be great. And, uh, you know, the-, the beauty of it is is to just start doing that. It doesn't take a fortune. You know, these big, big organizations like ASPCA and they need they need six digits. They need millions. You know what? A thousand dollars a month would spay and neuter. Well, I can't do the math in my head, but it would be a whole bunch of dogs and cats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because because well, I, I, you know, if it was nice round even numbers, it would be one thing. But it costs our cost. Maths get, are hard. I know how it is. <laughs> yeah, they maths are hard. Um, it it would be a little less than a hundred dollars for the surgery and the rabies vaccine, which would be be required and then I want to tack the fifty dollars on top of that that I would give as a cash incentive. So it's not a real nice even number. But I mean you're looking at a little less than two hundred dollars per animal to do everything that's needed to make that work. And uh, you know, think about how many that would do if we had that a month. We don't need six digits. You know, just a little bit will will start turning the tide. Yeah. 
And I think, uh, well, again, because I just because I know people who have done stuff like this in the past, that I think uh, there's got to be ways, you know, also free market solutions of finding ways to uh, make those costs on you cheaper. So it's cheaper, you know, so more, you know, less, you know, the donations actually, you know, do more. So exactly, uh, you yes. Know, because I, I know at least up here the only the only way it was ever able to work is if some of the vets came in and it, it kind of uh, you kind of bug the vets some of the local vets enough for them to agree to take time out of their day like once uh you know once a month they would usually do it where they would uh, say they would do like a you know a whole they would spend like a whole day like on a Saturday or something and just do constant uh you know spa- as many spaces as they could <laughs> and, and and for you know pro bono. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, when you have, when you have people who are willing to do that, then you can, uh, usually get these things going even farther for less money. So, yeah. Indeed. So, all right. Uh, either you guys have anything else to say before we go? Uh, no, I'm golden. buy Bitcoin. Yeah. It still looks like a, it's a good time to buy. Actually, right now. I would say buy Ethereum, but yeah. That would just be me. Still not on the Ethereum train, but whatever. Anyway, so, all right. Well, once again, Rhonda, thank you very much for coming on. I'm glad we got to uh, get your story out. And any, anybody who was catching the live stream, uh, I hope you uh, consider checking out more of our podcasts. We have a lot of these shows. As I said at the beginning, this is 100, number 137. So plenty of content to check out if you liked the, you know, if you thought we were entertaining as Rhonda did. <laughs> then <laughs> feel free yeah. to check out our back catalog and uh, stick around. We got more coming this year. Uh, all right, so this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our content can be found and all of our other information can be found at solpodcast.org. There is a you know, Patreon still going. We have a new episode coming out this week. Is it? What? Yeah, there'll be another one out this week. Uh, last one came. Uh, one one just came out, which was uh, titled "I Stole from uh, Michael W. Dean: uh, The Stems and Seeds of Liberty." Uh, it was actually very interesting. I got to go back through the first twenty episodes the of the show. Seeds. Yeah, he he threw it out there as kind of a thing. He's like, if if Jeremy ever does outtakes from you know the the seeds of liberty, he can call it the stem, stems and seeds of liberty. I'm like, I'm stealing that because I was planning on doing that anyway, and I actually went through the first twenty episodes of our show, and. Aside from getting over the horrible audio quality in a number of them, <laughs> especially the first two episodes. Oh, they're bad. They are bad. Uh, aside from that, uh, you know, and, then, and then the one Google Hangout episode we did with Adrian Hughes, that was pretty brutal too. Um, aside getting f- through that, there was some really entertaining stuff that I had kind of forgotten about, some conversations we had pre-show and post-show. So anybody who's not a patron yet, it's still only a dollar a month, you know, just to get all the content. And there's usually now at least one episode a week. So please consider going over to uh, Patreon slash Seeds of Liberty and throwing a buck at us and uh, get to check out all that stuff. All right. So, once again, this has been the Season Liberty Podcast, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace in the Middle East. The Central Scrutinizer is a Soviet-style leviathan trying to keep track of all you do. That's why I use a VPN or virtual private network from Bola VPN. Bola VPN is inexpensive, secure, and will allow you to use your computer without leaving a trail. Bola VPN is now also offering torrent seed boxes for safely sharing media with the world. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them from the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N dot net. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com.